evening everybody. I'm going for a little stroll around the street, or as we used to call it, the block. Now many of you who grew up in the streets here would recognise this place as the block. Good evening Anthony, thank you for joining me. Um, yeah, let's go for a little walk shall we? So where I am right now is at the top of Rusney Wyth. This was the middle street in a maze of streets. I've taken you on a tour here before. Shemai Keris, thank you for joining us. Karis. Um, yeah, we're going around the block. Good evening, Lianka. This here is Rosny with. And we're going to go for a little walk around to Rosadiri. See what we can find, shall we? You're probably wondering, what's he doing walking around the streets with this camera constantly? Well, the idea is, I'm going to document the place I grew up and the things we used to get up to. And much, much more. Okay, as part of a, as part of a bigger project, let's see what we've got you. As part of a bigger project called Zenial. I'm going to be doing live streams, I'm going to be making photographs, aerial photographs, writing, making films, videos, just a ton of stuff. And hopefully you can join me on my travels. How's that sound? Good evening Michael, Kaylee. Thanks for joining me. So here we are, I think in the background there we've got Rossa Dairy up there background now what what you'll find when you're walking around you is that it's one big circle that we call the block and around that circle we joined streets but Rusney with was the main main block that then steered off back to my square our street where we grew up um, now what we call that street was the Bronx or what others call the street was Bronx uh, because it mirrored a little bit what New York Bronx was I assume um, so I've decided to call these streams the Bronx how's that sound? so this is the beginning or oh, at least last week was the beginning with the with the cum. Um, so this week we kick off with the block. I'm going to take you around the streets that sort of um, informed us who we were. Informed. Hello, evening. So over the next six weeks, I'm going to do a set of streams, and instead of Prince Street, you all remember Prince Street. We are now going to be calling it the Bronx. You just... <laughs> you did. You should have said something. Um, that Sandra John just saw me pa pass in. Hello mister. Let's just see. Hello. You look like a friendly chap. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, well, I won't I won't excite him too much. But yeah, well where we're coming through here is the Ali. This was one of the shortcuts back in the day. Still is, I assume. It was one of the shortcuts that we took from one street to the other rather than sort of going the whole way around. Um, I'm sure we'll have more company in a moment. But let me just show you here. Good evening, him. So now I've ended up at the end of the Cum, or the park. And there's the Ali. Um, let's have a look. So 
So, any of you joining me right now, do me a favour, push that share button. It's over there somewhere. I'm not sure where. Um, my little cum is having a wobbly at the moment. I don't know what that's about. Evening. All right. Um, join us on. Uh, join us on you. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry. Getting a little bit distracted there. So yeah, coming now into my squadron, or the squadron as we call it, and anybody that's native to the squadron are squadronese. How's that? Um, well, here, here it all happened, I think. Uh, if I give you, if I turn this camera around, you'll be able to see this. the square, or the cross, the crossroads of this street, right here, if I just pan out, it looks pretty dramatic today with the light, leaving a mark, so here, we used to do all kinds of things, this was the sort of base of our street. This is where you came down, this is a cul-de-sac, and if we can look back there, there we've got the entrance to the park of the Combe. As we followed last week. So what do we do here? Ah, what all kids did, I suppose, and what, what all kids do now? I don't think so. Um, so this, this post here, very important post. Everybody has important posts. What am I going on about? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so here, we used to paint the floors here. Hot scotch. Was it hot scotch? Can't remember what you call it. Hot scotch. Um, Wendy Fleer was big on hot scotch. Am I right, Wendy? John Paul used to play hot scotch here, didn't you? <laughs> um, we'd paint the floors, um, do all kinds of stuff here. So. For kicks, street games. I used to play street games here. All kinds of street games. All right. Um, what did we do? What did we do? Some of the street games used to play in this place. Um, let me have a look here. So we used to play Kirby Touch. Anybody play those games anymore? I don't know. Kirby was a game that we just kick ball from one side of the street to the other hit the curb on the other side of the road. Um, how's it going, Phil? Um, there's rounders, French arrows. We used to do BMX ramps right in the middle here, yeah? right in the middle of the road. Didn't have half the bloody um, cars as you do these days. If you look in the background, cars everywhere, everywhere, parked on all the curbs. Um, Again, what's he on about? Anybody ever play knocker knockers when they were kids? It's pretty good playing knocker knockers here. You can have plenty of places to hide. Jump behind Emma Watts's wall there. Um, yeah. <laughs> John Paul used to play Kirby. Old school games, yes, they were old school games. Um, anybody ever play walls? You throw money against the wall and see who could get closest, then you keep someone else's money. It's a good little betting game that was. Uh, Shemai Claire? Uh, didn't you play Fox and Hounds? Of course we play Fox and Hounds. This was a perfect street for Fox and Hounds, with a park right behind us there. Yeah. Um, Go-karts? tell you what, we used to make go-karts. And we used to... Let me show you this. This hill, right from the top of the street, if we walk round. We used to make go-karts. Um, Alright, evening. So make go-karts and pretty much turn this place into something else. Um, yeah, Bulldog. We used to play Bulldog, that was awesome. So the um, premise of Bulldog was basically like tag rugby, I suppose. Where 
you'd have one team one side and one team the other and you'd have to get from them or get past them to the to the goal I suppose. Knocker knockers on Rosie's house. Now John Paul Richards. Who's Rosie? Good evening Dorian. Uh, are, are you putting yourself in it though by confessing? We have one of uh, my square and residence here, Stewart. Hello, Stewart. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll tell you what was strange with this street. We, we all had these sort of habits, but right here, right behind me, this corner here, that was your chip fan corner. That's where the chip fan went, or sometimes some of the ice cream men. Now, one ice cream van, which was Balbini, he used to park here. No other ice cream man parked there. It was just Balbini. Balbini would come in the middle of the day. Um, let's just say about 1.15 in the afternoon. No fail. You could get anything off Balbini. Um, our parents would want cigarettes. <laughs> We'd want chewing gums or um, mint choc ice cream, possibly. Choc ices. Then, on this corner, that belonged to Cressy's ice cream. Anybody remember Cressy's? Good evening, Isla. Kieran. Good old days, you're right, Emma. Anyway, Cressy's. Good evening, Chris. Hit the share button. Let's get this around, shall we? Right here. Cressy's used to park there. Now, if any of you remember Cressy's coming around, he was a glutton for punishment, but I think he enjoyed it. Um, here, he'd park up, and we'd run from miles around. We'd hear the ice cream van come in, we'd hear his town, and then come over and ask for free ice cream. Why did we ask for free ice cream? Because nobody had any money. It was the 80s. And it was kind of brave coming around to actually sell ice cream and expect money for it. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, one of the games was that we would get the Oops. This thing has decided to, to play up here this evening. Should my Martin. Hope everything went well. Um, Marie Jones. Rian Evans. Anyway, sorry, I was on half a story there before I uh, got distracted once again. Cressies would come round and we'd stand on this corner but he would give us a free ice cream, he wouldn't mind giving us a free ice cream as long as we could hold our hands out on the counter where he would then sort of um, slap the counter with a, with a ruler and if we moved our hands we wouldn't get a free ice cream. If we kept a hand there when that ruler slapped the counter, we would get a free ice cream. Or free lollipops, should I say. These weren't just lollipops, these were broken lollipops. Um, or lollies or whatever you want to call them. Um, it's pretty dark here, is it not? Anyway, let's go for a little walk. So any of you remember Cressy's? Back in the day, yeah broken lollipops. You had to break your fingers in order to get a broken lolly, but it was worth it. Because, like I said, we'd come to these vans hoping for a free free snack or something or other. Um, on. Good evening, Les. Pretty dark on this screen. I don't know if it is for you guys. Yeah. Different times back in this street back then. Um, I remember when we when we used to have um, there was a bit of a rivalry in this street. A bit of a rivalry in every street, to be honest. Let me just make sure this is working properly. Something laying up. Turn it off and start again. Up to all sorts. 
messing this about. Sorry. It will be back to normal in just a second. Um, let me hold that there. There you go. I think that's working. Right, sorry about that. Um, anywho. Yeah. Back in the day, back in the day as they say, there was a bit of a rivalry. Now this street itself and all streets was so they had segments. They broke up from one side to another. Let's just say my square had two sides to it, and each side had a different gang. Now if you came from the lower square, I don't think we ever had any name for it. Um, however, the top half certainly had a name for it. And it was named, I don't know why, the Colliers. Um, I'm sure some somebody can shed light on that. And it was never safe to sort of go from one side to the other uh, without getting sort of blasted with water or eggs sometimes. I don't know. Um, so you had to sort of devise some kind of strategy in order to get out of the, the, um, the street without being attacked in one way or another. Although we were all mates, uh, especially as we got older. Simon Owen, the Bronx. Indeed, Simon. Good evening, my friend. Uh, Nigel Davis. Michelle Harris. Thanks for joining me. Um, yeah, so we're going for a little walk. Hang on, we've got... Um... I know. <laughs> They're calling me an old man, apparently. So I'm coming now. Give me a second. Do you want to be on here? No. no. <laughs> Come on, it doesn't matter, man. Look, I'm uh, I'm live streaming. I'm documenting my square and uh, and a couple of the other streets. I, I hope so. I'd like to get photographs of everyone if you'd all like to be involved. <laughs> anyway, thanks for talking. I'm gonna I'm gonna have a roam around. <laughs> Thank you, cheers. That was Susan. Um, we were quite friendly with, um, well, all of us kids were friendly in, in the day. Graham and Andrew, I don't know if you're on you guys. Um, good evening, Tina Carr, Annie Carriard. So, um, yeah, I remember once, and this is how it used to work, but right here, in this part of the street, there used to be street parties and everybody would get together and literally there'd be a table running across this part of the street into the field um, and yeah they'd, they'd regularly be kind of street parties and things up here you could get involved everybody would set up the tables and I can't even remember what they were Exactly, but I think I remember one being the Jubilee, I'm sure, or something of that nature in celebration. But these were very different times. Everybody sort of got involved together then. I'm, I'm sure it still happens in many places. However, I don't think you see it like you used to. We had a royal wedding party. Was that what? It, is that what it was, Emma? Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, is that Bumford? Yes, that was Bumford. That was Andrew's mother, or Graham's mother, or Margaret. Um, let's go for a little walk up here. Um, I want to show you something I may have shown you before, but I'm going to show you again, because I can, for the sake of it. Let's go for a little walk. No, like I said, I'm sure 90% of my whole family lived in my square at one point. You're probably right, um, Kyle, your family being Justin, Vicky, Lana, yeah, am I right? Um, one of the party for a day, or oh, for D-Day, sorry. Yes, Philip, yes, I'm sure it was D-Day. Do you know, I remember a few of them over the years, um, but one quite vividly, 
And I think Phil, you who lives in the street currently, I believe, or we've stood one time, you may have been a little bit too young to remember the one I remember, I'm sure. Anyway, behind me, I have brought attention to these in the past. These are the garages. Now these garages, not many people know what they were for. Nobody knew who belonged to them. However, I do remember, as I've mentioned before, a Ferrari being in one of them. Now we used to jump on the roofs and we used to, yes, a Ferrari. Yes, this is a council estate. Doesn't mean that there wasn't a Ferrari in there. Now, nobody knew who belonged to these, but we still sort of, um, we, we were naughty enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we were naughty enough to be jumping on the roofs. Some, I remember once, um, Bronx was written on the side of one of those. Somebody's painted over it now, so we can't see that. Good evening, Stuart. Hello. It's Mardi. Hang on. Wait there, Bella. Okay. Hello. That's Bella. You okay, guys? Yeah, you hi. Away? Being Mam Gee, that's grandmother who still lives in the Bronx. So, goodbye, see you later. Yeah, so here we played a lot around you, I think behind, in and around, but what's, what's fascinating that it's still here is, let me have a look, let me turn this around. Simon break in. I can't break in Simon. I I don't have the the skills, should we say. I might be in my square knee, but that doesn't mean that I have the skills to break in anyway. He says. Uh, it's a shame we can't get through here right now. Um Yeah. If you go through here side all the way down the side so at the back of these garages if you followed this all the way down the side you could go into the field but what was interesting here was there was a factory behind and this factory provided a gem that we all needed it's like um what should i say slingshots or slugs as we call this meaning, I remember once when I was a kid and I was, the, I was probably seven, eight years old, I was given a, a slingshot. Now, for anybody who does know what a slingshot is, which I'm sure many do, many of you will remember a wooden slingshot, something like um, Dennis the Menace used to carry around, which would be a wooden V with an elastic, and then he would catapult something from that, yeah? In our case, we used to have steel. Steel ones made for us. Those materials came from the factory. But we also used to use metal slugs that are still so we'd bend those into a V and then pull these things and shoot people <laughs> as as you do. Um, we didn't have a Mr. Wilson as did Dennis the Menace. Um, yes, they were sharp as hell, Simon Owen. Um, they were, they were absolutely lethal when you think back. But like I said, this was a very different time. Um, I'm sure many kids don't even play with slings these days, but um, Sandra John says, always wanted one, but we weren't allowed. No, and that, that was good. That's good sort of advice to stop you from using these slings. Slings are not good. <laughs> They're dangerous. Um, how nobody lost an eye. Th this is another thing that, that intrigues me. You hear so much of kids doing all these kind of things and they get into trouble or they have hurt doing the silliest of things these days. But when you consider the things that we did as children and the things that we used, I have no idea how we managed to, to survive or um, you know, come out of that era un unscathed. 
uh, Emma Watts said she had one. What kind of one was it? Was it a was it a, a metal one, Emma, or was it like a a wooden V-shaped slingshot? No, I wouldn't let my kids have one either. Um, good evening, Lindsay. Thanks for joining. How many of you out there actually had a slingshot? Were you allowed to have one? Did you ever use slugs that we took from the, the factory? Now, I think I'm going to go around. Let's go around, okay? Let's go back around the block. I love that term. I, I, somebody reminded me, and not so long ago, of the phrase, the block. Now, this is part of a cultural... can't get my words out. A cultural sort of um, language. Um, the block, to me, I, I, I find that sort of um, comforting when I hear it because it's home. Eighties kids were sensible, says Sandra John. Um, I don't know about that, Sandra. I can't remember much sense, to be honest, when we were kids. However, I might be wrong, maybe you were much more sensible. Uh, metal one, I think. Your father made it for me, <laughs> says Emma. So my father, Prince, um, made Emma a slingshot. I don't know. Um, Simon Owen says he had a few. Were they, were they metal ones? Did you get your materials from the, from the factory? We're going to go around now. So we're going back around the centre of the block at the top, and we're going to go up to Bethesda Road. Uh, now, this is where the factory was situated, which I'll tell you a bit more in a moment. Christian Williams. <laughs> um, I can't read this as I'm moving. I can't read anyway. I had the metal black widow sling and also a Diablo 2. I used to use what you call slug which you used to find on the train tracks is that right what train tracks that's interesting uh, and Christian where do you come from I can't see your I can't see your your profile however that's interesting I remember a black widow my cousin used to have one of those which was a quite that was a professional slingshot if I'm correct. Um, yeah, of course, borrowed the materials, says Simon Owen. Yeah, so it, these were different times, like I said. A day I blew too. I can't say I've ever heard of one of those, Christian. Though, I imagine it was pretty impressive. I, I do remember my cousin having a black widow. And I remember a police officer confiscating it, quite rightfully. Um, around the block to me was from my grandparents. Yep, yeah, mum's and dad's house. Down the street, past the Benacritis household, through the alley, and back to mum's house. That was the block, yeah, for you. For us, the block was the centre. Good evening, Craig Reese. We are going down to the old factory plot. Now we're going to visit where many of us worked at one point or another, even if it was just for a short spell. Some still work in there, but in the different premises. Uh, we're now going to visit where it used to be in Bethesda Road and at the back of our street where we used to climb over the fence and like little ninjas as we assumed we were we used to crawl through the barbed wire jump over the fence and then round the back of the factories to crawl round and into the skips hoping we weren't caught because I'm sure that if we were we would have been a lot of trouble, I imagine. Good evening, Vicky. Um, Emma Watts Bowen, my first job was what in the factory? Is that right? 
Well, the gate is open. Let me show you the old gate. This is where we used to go in. So you'd have to go through this gate, which now seems to be fine. <laughs> As you say, there's the old milk box. It's amazing that this is still here, to be honest. Um, this gate has been manufactured using the materials they used to have on site. There used to be a few signs here at one point. Um, maybe we'll find one now. Let's have a look. So if we go down the steps, which are still here, so the te steps are here. Now, what's amazing, this box ran for about 60 years in this community, providing doors, um, Venetian, uh, I forget the names of the, the types of things they used to offer, but you know the, the, the petition doors, the movable walls that they have in many offices, those are the things they used to make here. They still make them, they still make them in Llanelli, um, however, Tumble had the main factory that, that delivered these worldwide. But what's sad is it's now reduced to a pile of rubble. Sad. Now I can remember driving in here over many years. Hi Dad, it's Kai boy. <laughs> Good evening Kai. He's now joining me online. Good evening Mohammed. Marie Jones, my brother Gwyn worked there too. Um, sorry, yeah Marie Jones, yeah. Emma Watts, you, I, when did you work there? What year was it Emma? That's interesting to know. So many Squareneys worked in this factory. Well one, it was up the road, it was easy access. And if you could get in, you were on a good wage. It was a nine to five job. Well, it should have been a nine to five job. Um, and they used to employ at least about 50 or 60 when I first started there. It then closed down a bit later on and reopened after a while. For some years, I went back to work there. Um, Nicola Reese Jones. I worked there with the best bunch of people. Mags, Fleer, Chris Flint, Gareth, Claire Dill, Maureen, um, Moira Parker. They were happy days. And yes, I worked there while well, you worked there, Nicola. So yeah, they were they were good times. We had um we had good laughs here, I think. Good evening, Lee. Anyway, I'm, t I'm standing now where I used to park my car before walking in through the front door. So this is all you see. Here we used to park, right here. And when I turn my camera, I can actually, I think I can actually pinpoint where the door was, right here. So this, was the main entrance. It was never as simple as walk through there and start your job. Nope, everybody would make a brew, have a fag outside the front door, and then maybe we'd get some work done. I was always on time, always sort of, I ne never did any of that kind of stuff. Um, but I can actually, it's strange, it's like walk, walking into the past at some stage. I can still, I can imagine exactly where everything was, which is, uh, it stays with you. When you're, a, when you're a youngster and it's one of your first jobs, good evening Nicola, when it's your first job, it kind of stays with you, this, this whole thing. I, I probably have nightmares about the place, or having to turn up to work. Here, behind me, used to be, um, what can we call it, Sawdust City. We used to go in there 
and we used, this where we used to cut the wood. Um, I can't can't put this into perspective. It was a, it was quite a big factory at one time. Um, it closed in 2008, I think, and then it was demolished by 2009, which is kind of sad because, like I said, it provided a lot of work for the for the community. And not only that, it was one of you know one of the well-known businesses besides the forge and the bakery, which was also down this road. And again, provided a lot of work for the community over the years. But this is amazing. I absolutely love sort of a little treasure cove. It won't be here that long. It'll be gone before you know it. But I'm going to have a little walk around. Now, I'm actually inside the building. In theory, I'm in the canteen. <laughs> uh, this is nuts. I'm in the canteen. I'm actually in the, uh, well, I call it a canteen. It was more like a break area where we had kitchen facilities and all that. The bricks are still here. I can even feel the soul of the factory still in here. Now this is where everybody used to skive and then the boss would come out and look for you. Um, can you believe that? I'm actually standing in the break area, or canteen, or kitchen, whatever you want to call it. Isn't that wonderful when you can walk in and remember things as it was? I wonder how long it's going to be like this year for. There, there has been plans to build houses here for many years. Well, ten years, and nothing's happened yet. Um, so, maybe it'll be like this for another ten years. Maybe go and have a look. If you worked here, have a little walk down here. Soak up the atmosphere. <laughs> right now, I'm going to show you. Um, let's have a look. No, forget that sign or whatever it's meant to be. I think actually that's a that's um, a frame from one of the doors we used to build. Now, right here. Now there used to be a building right where I'm standing. This is gone, obviously. But right there was the perimeter. Now this is where we used to jump over huge fencing. And we used to come down the back, which you can't get a, a feel for that right now because, because it's all grown over. But we used to jump over the fence in here and then we would have to tuck or crawl on the floor. I want to see how far I can actually go before I'm stopped by any rubble. I don't think I can go very far. Please, anybody that wants to work here, come down here and have a look and try and retrace where you used to, I don't know, spend your time or work or even your station, wherever wherever you were, wherever you did in the factory. Go and see if you can find where you used to stand or used to work. Now inside the factory there was a couple of lines, I suppose, that we worked on. Um, I worked mainly with Chris Flint back then, building basic doors. They were the basics, and then you had Junk, who was building... I forget, it's a long time. It's a long time, Junk, forgive me, I can't remember what it is. Bones, you used to do past doors, didn't you? Anyway, there, was a, there were many duties. Um, you either built frames, or you packed them or you built the panels, or you put them together. And we used to have some good laughs in this place. But my biggest laughs were always coming in over that fence to look for slugs. Now what I'm like to find right now, if I can, I'm gonna walk through the front door. Let's see, Let's see if I can retrace this. This might be the saddest thing I've ever done, however, I'm doing it. So right now I'm going through the front door. Here, this very wall, let me take this down here, this very wall here is where the clocking machine was. And we didn't care much for the clocking machine because that told them how long we'd been there. Am I right, Nicola? Um, Chris the Legend. Who was Chris the Legend? Oh, Chris, sorry. 
Chris Flint, I believe. Um, so right now, let's get a... So I can't quite... It's amazing that some of these foundations are still here. So I found the clocking machine, which was here. Right on that wall. Um, then there was a storeroom in here which had the oh, a couple of the tools. Can't remember what. And where that pile of rubble is, I imagine, is where your section was, junk. If you see this video, junk and bones, your your section has been reduced to a pile of rubble. And just beyond this is the offices. And maybe the entrance to the offices from the side. Yes, Rich Jones worked there as well. Lorraine. Um, good evening, everybody. Shmaitina. You'd think I'm talking rubbish. However, my aim is to retrace Tumble as it was and sort of connect all those little things that made it what it was for me and for all the people that lived here during that time. It's, it's crazy to see. Well, it's not crazy. It is what it is. It's... It's 10 years since it's been knocked to the ground. I'm looking around you, sorry, like a fart. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm gonna go around the side and see if the storerooms are still here. Not only that, I'm hoping to find, and I, I haven't scouted this area before coming here today, but I'm hoping to find some of the materials that we used to come in to collect for slingshots. So like I said, I'm now, I'm actually, before I continue, I'm now, no, I think I'm still in the office. I never liked the office much. Some were big fans. Let's see, where are we, where are we? I think I'm in the stores, I believe. It's kind of hard to get your bearings. I'm definitely in the stores. Now, I, I don't know if our Tank Warwin remembers this, but they used to give you a paste in if you give them enough lip. And being the bigger boys that they were, to us youngsters, we used to shout a bit of a bouse from the other side of the factory, and then hopefully we'd have a chase in. And we did, and then we'd have a hammer in as well, which is good times. You'd think you'd want to avoid it, but kids being kids, I say kids, I was 18 at the time. And like I said, it was probably my first big job making my own cash, besides besides an, a paper round. Um, right, let's have a scout around you. So I'm now behind, I think I'm behind, the factory. You can't quite tell. Like I said, a lot of it's overgrown. And what I'm going to do is look for some materials that might be left here. More rubble. So if I'm at the back of the factory right now, this is where we met. We've been friends ever since. I tell you what, it was one of those places. Um, you made friends. Friends for life, again. Tumble was a very close-knit community even then, and everybody sort of stuck together, no matter what. There would be rows, but people got over it, as they do. Um, what you're hearing right now is a stream of consciousness. Um, because I'm looking for evidence when we were kids. It's very hard to tell. A lot of this stuff has grown over. I can't even see the street anymore. 
which you used to be able to see quite easily. I'm at the bank of what's left of the factory and there's a rubble and beyond that I think I would be able to um, find a bit of something however I'm not going to get in there so let's get out of here it's a shame I'd love to be able to find some of this stuff it's probably not the best time to be looking while I'm talking I'm trying to see if there is some kind of now, you see the steel stuff? We used to have rods of this kind of thickness that we used to make our slingshots out of. But if I was to describe these slugs that we used to use on the end of the elastic, they were like long, long flat pieces with then sharp, jagged bits. And you know, when I think about actually using those, I, I don't think I ever shot anybody personally with one of these things. I'd hope I didn't. I do remember thinking back then, I can't risk that. So I'm, and I'm sure many did. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure many did. It was that kind of, um, it was that kind of place. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's calling me. Who's in there now then? This is a pretty fascinating place to have a look around, even if you've got no connection to it. It's still, um... Who's there? Can't see who's there. Are you watching me right now, whoever's in that vehicle? I'm going to have a surprise here now. Are they actually... They're leaving. Who is it? Let's go and see, shall we? I'm now at the entrance of the old factory. Good evening, James. Oh. <laughs> Dean, did you work here once? No. Well, why not? I Say it again. I know, man, you did. Yeah. <laughs> you can't actually see anything through here. Yeah? This year is my uh, cousin Dean. This is Tina's brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Where are you going? Picking up now opposite the old Gwen Drive School. Yeah. Uh, going down to some dial or somewhere. See, now that's that's the way to do it. Living the dream. Well when we lived the dream here, it was a very different kind of dream. <laughs> so where are you going now, did you say? Opposite the old Gwen Drive School I'm going now. Oh, is it? I had a shock to see you in there now. <laughs> well, be careful. Yeah, see you later. Take care. Um, so that was a bit of a shock. That was my cousin. Long time no see. So here you go. Tumble Industrial Unit. That's not what it was called when I was there. It was called... Brockhouse Modern Fold and then it changed to Dividers Limited I believe and then this happened how much you can actually see there I have no idea but this was the entrance so you came through these big gates you came down this side, you drove down there, directly down that way. As you can see, there's a road markings that follows around the building. Then the offices would be here. And then right here, you'd have the, the warehouse or the stores or where they used to keep all, all the stuff ready to be delivered. But it is no more. There used to be a huge couple of skips here that held aluminium, which, dare I say, used to go missing a lot. I wonder why. I wonder why an aluminium skip would go missing. I've heard many stories about that over the years. It's amazing to see, or to not see, that there's no trace, really, of the, the kind of stuff they used to do. Always there. Maybe I'm wrong. 
There is something here. Let's see what we've got. Absolute rubbish. Nothing. Some wood tossed into the, the hedges. Nothing of any importance. Now we never ventured much down this side. But maybe, just maybe, there might be something left of the time this fag factory stood. You can see, just at the edge of this, and again, you can't get in anywhere, unfortunately. That's a shame. Maybe, at some point, I'll find some materials and then I'll show you what we did. Maybe somebody's got an old slingshot they'd like to share um, just for us to see what kind of things they were. Or maybe, maybe one still exists in my father's shed, possibly. Although he does have some um, serious clean-outs. Rian Brettel is watching. Good evening, Rian. Um, we're going to have to go for a dig. I like that idea, Emma. That would be fantastico. Right, I'm going back around the other side for one quick jolly and let's see if there's something. I can't give this up. It's like looking for a treasure now, isn't it? Um, so, thanks for popping in. Thanks for um, sharing my little jaunt around the block, as we used to call it. Now, every week I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do it from different angles. Now, there's so many things I'd like to sort of share with you, and I just thought this might be a good introduction after showing you the, um, the cum, and how we used to spend our time as kids. And there's probably so many things I'd like to get people involved in, if you're up for it. Uh, over the next sort of possibly over the next three years, but over the next six months at least, I'd like to start documenting um, my square to begin with this way. Like I said, also I'm going to make um, a couple of short films, maybe art pieces, portraits. I'd like to make some sort of narrative photographs as well. Uh, including a lot of the members of our street over the 80s and 90s. Now, what interests me more than anything at this stage is my generation. Not to exclude any other generation, because I'd like everyone to be involved. Um, cheers, Emma. Um, so, like I said, over the coming weeks, I'm going to be knocking on your doors. But don't be afraid to send me a message. If you'd like to sort of be involved in this project, in many ways, like I said, I want to write about our generation and our time growing up here. And that's looking at maybe um, the older people's perspective of us as kids. Um, maybe the younger generation who uh, who came after us and maybe what they think of our generation and getting a perspective, an all-round perspective of life here in Tumble during those times and I'd like to write about that so you can be involved if I sort of set up um, subjects or themes I'd like you to get in touch with me or, if I get in touch with you, please, you know, if you're interested, let's do stuff together and make this a collaboration project. I think that's the most important thing, that we sort of make something together, something that reflects a real idea of what this place was. I've just found a golf ball. No. To us, when we were kids, were proper little gems. If you found one of those, happy days. Get a bag of these, you go around our miniature golf course around the, around the Combe. 
I did mention this last week. I'm going to keep that and I'm going to play around the golf, which is where I'm going to go now, I think. So, yeah, keep in touch. Um, I'll be in touch. I hope you enjoyed the, the walk around the block. If you did, share it. <laughs> and follow me. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, follow, follow me on Twitter, um, and I'll keep you in the know. Until then, happy days, over and out, Brussels sprout. <laughs>